We, yeah, what's good, up, man? Yeah, we appreciate up. everybody for tuning in, man. Let's get to it, man. Let's get to it, man. We talking about all that before, but, man, look, we finna get behind it, man. We gonna go talk about that real shit, man. Listen, we gonna talk about that 305. We gonna talk about it, man. The fly So tell me about how is it being a rapper back coming out of Dayton, man? Tell me about it. Tell me about how it's been coming out of Dayton. What's that like for you? Um, I mean, I think we already know, like, how Dayton County operates. You know what I'm saying? So, right. You know what I'm saying? 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 You know what I'm I'm going to just be real. When I got out of um, prison, you know, my first day out, I went right in the studio. You know what I'm saying? I had I had recorded a track with Todd Hill. I think I did, like, two tracks with Todd Hill. And, you know, it's funny how people... Shout out to Todd Hill, too. It's funny how people operating right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, DJ telling you, oh, you know, we could break your record. And then, you know what I'm saying? It's all kind of people DMing you about getting your followers up. And it's just a lot of schemes and scams out there. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people right. who, who really ain't for rappers. I mean, it's a lot of people who just really ain't for people, period. You know what right. I'm saying? And they just really for themselves, man. They really just all about trying to get a dollar. So, you know what I'm saying? I had to I had to get through that little mess. And then, you know, we, we where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? I did my mixtape at uh, Make It Bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know it's a lot of producers out there, but you know what I'm saying? For for my flow of music, I had to really like search because people want money more than they want product. You know what I'm saying? So right. a lot of times, a lot of times, dog, I just had to, you just got to find your way. It's not an easy thing, dog, but you, but you got to be focused. You got to be disciplined. So, you know what I'm saying? Right. Shout out to the homie said, Beats by said, you know what I'm saying? He gave me a beat to, like, one of my biggest singles, Down and Out. And, you know, me and, uh, uh, me and my homeboy, Polo the King, been stealing beats from him forever. <laughs> beats we ain't even supposed to have because that's his cousin. So, we basically been taking beats from him forever, man. So, people like him actually gave me a sound, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, man, you know, it was just really a lot of grinding. Like, I came home, I had 500 songs. So, you know, I go in the studio, you know, um, producers and engineers used to people doing one song in three hours. When I go in there, man, I could do, I could do 10, 12 songs. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving faster than the producers and engineers. So, you know, you, I just had to kind of like find some balance. You know what I'm saying? So now, what inspiration does your music give to an aspiring artist out of uh, coming up out of Dave Brown anywhere? Well, you know, I'm a I'm an older individual, so most of my raps is is about my life. You know what I'm saying? I know I know a lot of people they and they can easily go and just create material. You know what I'm saying? Like my material come from a deeper place, so I just hope that. I can inspire other artists to just talk about what's going on around us. You know what I'm saying? Politics, fatherhood, religion, all that come with being a man. Right now, I don't feel like people telling a complete story. You know what I'm saying? People people saying and rapping about things that they not living. They rapping about things that they not doing. And most of the time, they rapping about things that they don't believe in. And a lot of times, that's why it don't work. You know what I'm saying? It worked for others, but it ain't going to work for everybody. Because if you ain't... I like to always take it back to R&B. When I was growing up and I listened to Prince and I listened to Teddy Pendergrass, there was just some fly niggas for the most part because they were saying things that they believed in. You know what I'm saying? When they... When Jail, when Jail Levert came on and said, Baby, I'm ready. He made me think that he believed that. Right. I don't right. really know, like, if, if 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 he did, I don't know if he wrote the song, but the way he performed the song, it was just it was it was just believable. How can you deny it? You really couldn't deny it. You know what I'm saying? It sounded believable. Everybody believed it, matter of fact. And that's why it was a good song. We all know Michael Jackson history, and it's been a thousand documentaries about Mr. Michael Jackson. 
But when Michael Jackson said Billy Jean is not my lover for whatever reason, bro, the whole world believed this man. And that's basically Anybody what I've got to do. Right. Now, growing up in your house, uh, how many kids were you in your household with? Well, you know what I'm saying? I was a mama's boy, you know what I'm saying? I was uh, I was my mama's only child. So, you know what I'm saying? I grew up in a house with just basically me and her. And, you know, now looking back on it, I appreciated that. Because, you know what I'm saying? My mom died when I was 12. So it was kind of like, it was kind of like being attached to her for that long. You know what I'm saying? It was just like how it was supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? She was my best friend for a long time, like so. I guess that that was that was how it was supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? So growing up, I just I just grew up around her, and somehow I still developed, you know what I'm saying, like a love for music. You know what I'm saying? I just automatically like came up with these words. I used to freestyle a whole song before I knew how to write. Yeah, so that was kind of like not a rapping then. Well, yeah, but I was also like. I grew up in hoods where I could take something I've seen, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, I spent time in uh, Miami and I spent time in Newark, New Jersey. So those are the cities that kind of like crafted me. And I could actually freestyle about what I saw. And you know what I'm saying? I was listening to a lot of real street niggas talk fly. Like I was watching niggas jump out of box Chevy with Dickies on and jewelry hanging. You know what I'm saying? I, I I remember the first time that I knew what a Cuban link was. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas was like, oh, boy, this shit don't pop. Boy, that little flimsy shit you got. Boy, that, 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 that. And they were like, boy, this shit ain't going to pop. Boy, I can put a Mack truck with this. And I was like, boy, I want one of them. Immediately, I didn't know what the price was for them back then. But yeah, nah. I just was, it just was something like, you know what I'm saying? At my age, that's what I wanted. Because that's what I seen. You know what I'm saying? I wanted, as soon as my feet got big, big enough, I wanted a pair of cars. You know what I'm saying? I wanted a pair of Tim's just by watching. You know what I'm saying? I rapped about dickies. I rapped about niggas stuffing packages in the glove compartment. That's just because the scene. Right. <laughs> that was. Uh, now, growing up in your house, uh, how many kids do you have currently? Oh man, I got three. I got two girls and one boy. Um, my oldest daughter graduating this year. You know what I'm saying? She's a she's a pandemic graduate. So, so you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean that's what people don't talk about a lot in music neither. Like like fatherhood. You know what I'm saying? Like like what's like like what's actually being done to our children? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's real, man. That's real. Now, other than other than music, have you ever written like books, movies, or anything like that? Well, I ain't gonna lie, man. It's a, it's a, it's a good story behind that. You know, people might look at me and think like, "Oh, I'm young," but in actuality, you know what I'm saying? I I I got a little age on me, and the truth is, I had gave up rapping in prison because I had so much time. I was like, "Boy, I ain't finna be no 35 nigga year old rapper." Right. So that's when I started now, writing. Right. So now being locked up for that period of time, did that help you to craft your writing better? I ain't gonna lie, man. I was bunkies with lifers. Like I had one bunkie for a while. Um, a little dude named Midnight. He 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 had actually been been sentenced to life as a juvenile. And he was like one of my bunkies for a long time. So I used to just talk and conversate with him. And I found out that I had just wanted to tell these guys stories. I was in the dorm with niggas who had 65 years or niggas who was 65 with 65 years left. So, so I really just wanted to tell their story. So that's why my pen game really got tight. I wrote books, TV shows, sitcoms. Just all type of stuff, just cause I wanted them to like it. You know what I'm saying? Here, here we is with niggas who ain't got no entertainment. I was basically writing it so they could like it. You know what I'm saying? This was this was before you know. This it was no social media involved. It was no um. 
no, no, nobody getting fly, just me sitting around a bunch of hard critics. So I, so when I tell you the next shit that I'm finna drop, like the run that I'm finna go on, man, it's probably gonna be some of the hardest shit, man. Just cause the, just cause of the critics I had. Right. That that yeah, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> now you say that you, uh, you were from Dade to Jersey. Now in Dade, I remember the Dunk Riders. They had a few different clicks out of there. You ever heard of Dunk Riders or had any affiliation with them or any other groups out of Dade? Well, well, I ain't gonna say I was signed to Dunk Riders, but you know. I was basically, you know what I'm saying, affiliated with them, you know what I'm saying? I was I was on the road with them, video shoots, iceberg, fella, you know what I'm saying, the homie soup, you know what I'm saying? I was like deep into that, you know what I'm saying? I was repping that to the fullest. And you know what I'm saying? I'm happy about that. Like that was a that was a great experience, man. To this day, Trick Daddy like still my favorite rapper. Like I don't watch him give respect like almost all over the world. And that's a big thing, bro. Like I seen, I seen how people was booking him for shows. I seen how when he come out and he say, "Anybody want a motherfucker die?" And like <laughs> bitches lose their mind, dog. Like, like that was a great experience, man. Great experience. Right, right. Dang, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Now, who would you say is your favorite music artist in the game right now? <laughs> Man, you know, not to sound cocky or nothing, I don't really have, like, no favorite music artist. Them been sparred against each other a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, real lyricists, man, and a lot of people, and since we talking to the streets, we could take Keith Wallace, for example. Keith yeah, Wallace. Exactly, a.k.a. Full Clip. If you know his history, you know he have been in the county. He had them PBL charges. And you know what I'm saying? He don't even cuss in his raps right now. He's still the same dude, but he like spiritual. You know what I'm saying? But he's right. still that same dude. Like he he speak in a tone that you won't even know that he don't curse. You won't even know that he not saying foolishness, but it's the passion behind it that make you forget about the language. You understand what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, like a clean rap. Yeah, it is clean. Like, he don't cuss or use profanity at all. He don't drink. He don't get out. He don't do nothing but his energy. Okay, so with him, with, with Keith Wallace, tell Keith Wallace to get at me. I got another artist from Broward that's the same as him. Listen, man, that's what it's about in this show. It's about connections and connecting people. That's how we can continue to expand and continue to be great, man. Why not, man? Wow. <laughs> got to, man. Got to, man. And you know... This a hey, man, what you doing, man? Is 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 definitely big. You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of people not doing that. You know what I'm saying? It take a large amount of vision to see something, and it take an even bigger amount of vision to see something in other people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people so caught up that they only that they vision is only on themselves. You know what I'm saying? They don't worry about the people that surround them, and that's how we feel because we care about ourselves and not the people around us. See, me, I care about the people around me more than I would myself. I give you a little more and keep a little less. The reason being is because it's gonna come back. Man, think about it like this, man. People like Dan Marino, who who never won a Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Who ain't never went down as having the most rushing touchdowns for a quarterback. Look how great he is. Look how his vision got to be. Just the throw passes. That ain't got nothing to do with him. That's all unselfish sportsmanship. You know what I'm saying? Like, a quarterback is is, 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 is unselfish unless you got one of them quarterbacks who's finna tuck and go. You know what I'm saying? But imagine a quarterback standing in that pocket waiting for you to get open. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people might don't catch the concept, but... Just when you think about it, like every point scored, every every yard gained, it ain't his. You know what I'm saying? Even though he get the throwing of the passing yards, but he really waiting for you to get open. He caught this play directed around a receiver. You know, we don't have enough quarterbacks, man. It's like these people, 
Right now, man, they trying to throw the ball and run and catch it. They trying to I hand the ball off to themselves. They want to do three plays with one person. Listen, man, and it's wow. It's wow, man. How you expect the O-line to keep blocking, man? You keep running the same play the same way. That far, that far. Now, um... Also, now you said that you with the jump riders. Did you ever go on a tour with them? Well, I ain't gonna say we went on an official tour, but yeah, I hit the road with them a lot, a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like Trick Daddy introduced me to Demp. Um, we went to Demp Week. We went to um, I forgot the DJ name in Chicago. Met Shauna. Like I had the man. I seen I seen a lot through that experience, and you know what I'm saying that. That lived with me today. Like those experiences, man, made it possible for me to lay on my bunk and deny, please, and just say I won't try, man. You know what I'm saying? That that kept me going. You know what I'm saying? The forties kept me going. Them experiences kept me going, man. Where I was able to just stand up, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and when you say uh, and when you say uh, you're from the 40s, what is, give us a breakdown of that. All right, the 40s is could be um some people call it Alipata, but it's basically 40th Street all the way to 50th Street. You know what I'm saying? In the middle, you got Alipata Middle School, you got um uh, Alipata Elementary. Well, it's not even called Alipata no more, but. That's basically where uh where I grew up, Charles Hadley Park. You know what I'm saying? Every everything in between, like that's the '40s. That's my hood. And that's Dade County, right? Yeah, that's Dade County, Liberty City. Boy, Liberty City, man. The whole yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. Definitely, man. Definitely. Hey man, you gotta keep it going, man. You know we got the Why Not tour coming up, uh, 21 and 2022. Yeah. And, uh, I have you on board, man. We're gonna go dumb on them, man. Man, definitely, man. I'm with it, man. And I definitely appreciate the opportunity, man. This, man, this really don't happen enough. So you know what I'm saying? We just, we just gotta change the weather, man. You know what I'm saying? We right. gotta make sure that a lot of that that a lot of people's sounds get heard because. We really can change the dynamics. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just sitting and like talk about different. It really take the people to change the dynamic of it. You know what I'm saying? You got to support what's real. That's all. You got to. Real going to respect what's real anyway, my brother. Yeah, man. That's all day, man. And so I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? I got the mixtape dropping June 21st. Gas talk. Hosted by DJ Smokey or uh, Po Boy Management. So, you know, man, we trying to go all the way up, man. Boy, that boy. Now, man, um, how can they reach you? Uh, man, you could go to my Instagram, at I am Gas Mask. You could go to my Snapchat, G dot Mask. Man, y'all flood my Snapchat, man. I don't know. I ain't got no Snapchat followers, man. You could go to my Twitter, at the Gas Squad. Also, Instagram at Gas Squad 305. Man, y'all just go tap in, man. If y'all haven't read my book, go to Amazon. You can put in Lanier Gasoline, Unfell in Love. You know, during this pandemic, man, read you a book or something, man. Write me. Let me know what you thought about it, man. I'm going to respond to you. So now, with that being said, after this interview... Gas mask gonna drop all the info under the video, everything. How you can watch that? How you can buy the book? That's hard. You Definitely. Tell me, why not? I am gas mask. Why not be great? Why not show? Change what they say you can't have. Hey man, what's that uh, motivation to a person that's growing up that wants that same dream that you have? Man, I just want to say to you, man, it's not easy. You know what I'm saying? Don't take nothing bad that happens to you as failure or reason to stop. Just renegotiate your plan, man. It's nothing wrong with going back in the huddle. If you have a chance to run that no huddle offense, run it down their throat. But you know you gonna get you gonna get hit a couple times, man. You know I took I took a lot of hits. I took a lot of um how I can say it? I took a lot of bad criticism. You know what I'm saying? I made a lot of um bad moves, but. You just got to keep moving, man. You got to stay focused, man. You got to be disciplined. You know, it's going to work out for you. All right. Now, 
that part, man. Y'all tuned in. Thank y'all for y'all time for tuning in with us, man. Hi, y'all know how to reach us, man. Love. Thanks, guys, man. <laughs>